We have heard this very phrase many a times. By the grace of God. If you ask somebody, how are you doing? They would always, you know, start with this. If they are a follower of Christ or a believer in Christ, they would say, by the grace of God, I am fine. Amen. You've heard people saying that several times, that by the grace of God, I'm fine. How many of them really understand the power of this word grace? You know, some people have gone to the extent of teaching that grace is nothing but the person of Christ himself. I would refrain myself from saying that grace is Christ himself. I would like to stick to scripture this morning and see as to how we can, you know, understand this very concept of grace and apply it in our own lives. Without going into the literal meaning this morning, I just want us to understand grace in a very simple word. Grace simply means free gift or unmerited favor or unmerited love that is being showered upon our lives. You see, when we come to Christ, the only thing we did, which was our part, was to confess Christ as our Lord and Savior. The only thing we did, which was our part, is to accept Christ into our hearts and ask him to come into our life. But the rest is what Christ did for us. And that is what we call as unmerited favor or unmerited love of God. Because everything that's been done in our lives and to, and to bestow upon us that which God has for us is done by God. And there's nothing that we have done that we deserve all of that. We're not merited people that we deserve all of the, of the favor and the love of God. It's unmerited gift. This is what we understand by the, by the word grace in its simplicity. It is the current or it is a force or it is a power at work in us. There is so much power in this very concept of grace. Because if we dig deeper and deeper in this concept of grace, we will understand this, that this very power is what brought us to where we are today. And we look at scripture of how Paul confesses. In one of his letters, he says, it's the grace of God that brought me to where I am today. It is not because of my intelligence. It's not because of my ability. It's not because I'm able to do certain things. It's not because I've worked hard, but it's all because of the grace of God. And I believe that this morning as we're sitting here today, that as we reflect on this very concept of grace, that we will also, like Paul say, it's not me, but it's the grace of God at work in my life. So this grace is powerful it is at work in us it is it's the current that can sweep us it's the power of god that can that can take us to places is a is a power of god that can that can make us be and also to become the kind of person that god wants us to be and let me tell you this that nobody can stop the grace of god if it comes towards us we've seen how sinners turns to god we've seen how people who have persecuted come against the word of God and the, and, the, and, the, and the men and women of God have been swept by this power of grace and ultimately gave their life to Christ. Nobody can stop the power of grace. If you look at Paul's life himself, he was swept by this power of grace that he himself cannot control that very thing that God was doing in his life. And so, on, and so nobody can stop this power of grace that's at work in us. Let's look at a few things this morning. I just want to, uh, to bring up some few scriptures for us this morning. And I'm going to take you through le the, letters of, the letters of Corinthians as well as from the book of, of Romans this morning. Just so that we understand what grace really is. The first thing that grace can do to us in its power is that grace brings life. Grace brings life. Now if you look at Romans chapter 5 verse 20 and 21. I'll just read it out for you. It says like this. Now the law crept in so that the offense would increase. But where sin increased, grace increased even more. So that just as sin ruled by bringing death, so also grace might rule by bringing justification that results in eternal life through Jesus, the Messiah, our Lord. Now Paul, in the preceding verses of the same chapter 5, he talks about how that through one man disobedience, that sin came into this world. And that as a result of sin, death came. 
And he talks about how the debt spread. And by the way, debt is contagious. It is very apt for us to understand how debt can spread. It's easy even for a child to understand these days when we explain about how that debt can spread so easily because of this virus. This contagious virus that spreads so fast and so quick and can, and can be transferred from one person to, to the other. Paul tells us that debt is just like that. It spreads. You see, when there is sin, a result of that is death, and death spreads so fast. And that's the reason why Christ had to come and to overcome that very dead and give us life. And so it is this grace that Paul talks about in this letter that teaches us that justification came through grace, through the death of Christ. You see, for you and for me sitting here today, who have understand this very concept, will agree with me that we are saved today not because of the good works that we have done, not because we've offered much to God, but because of that very grace that's at work in our lives, that we now can call ourselves as justified, as righteous children of God who can stand before God just the way we are without being judged by the wrongdoings we have committed. That does not permit us or does not tell us that we can continue to sin. Because Paul says in Romans chapter 6 that we shall not continue to sin. No, in, by, by no way we shall continue to sin just because we see that grace abounds more when there is sin. That does not permit us to sin even more. So what we're trying to understand here is that grace brings life. Grace gives us life. Secondly is that grace deletes sin from our lives. Grace deletes sins or grace removed away sins. Grace dealt with sin. Now I'll take you through Romans chapter 6 verse 14. This is what it says. For sin will not have mastery over you because you are not under law but under grace. You're not under law but under grace. Now in the preceding verses we see how Paul talked of how that we are buried with Christ. We're buried with him. When we are baptized into Christ, we are baptized into, into his death and his resurrection. When we, when, we, when, we got, when we go into that water, Paul explains to us that we, that we put that old man away in that water and we come out as a new person in Christ. We come out as a, as a person who has kept away all that which is old and have come up to be a, a new person. And so Paul tells that, 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 that the old man died with Christ and therefore... This very sin that we used to carry with that very old man is no longer active in our life. Is no longer powerful in our lives. You see, Paul says that sin does not have mastery in a way. In, in other words, he says that sin has no control of our lives anymore. It, is, it does not reign. It does not rule in our lives anymore. Why? Because now grace has come. Now grace has come and take over the power of sin from our lives. And so grace really deletes away sin. Grace really dealt with sin away. Grace really removes away sin from our lives. That's the power of grace. Thirdly, grace produces gifts. It is through grace that we receive what we call as spiritual gifts. You see all of us sitting here today and watching uh, us today this morning. I just like to tell you this. Maybe this is just a reminder that all the gifts that have been given to you is not because we deserved it. It's not because we have worked for it. It's not because we especially, you know, have been, been, been born. But actually it's been given to us by grace. Let us be thankful that God has given us gifts so that we can operate in this body, which is the body of Christ, so that we can bless one another. So that we can, can, we, we can bring in that very atmosphere of the Holy Spirit's move. So that we can manifest that power of God. Even in, as we meet together. You see gifts have been given to us by grace. We call them spiritual gifts. Or we call them sometimes as the gift of grace. Because every spiritual gifts that were given to us. Have been given to us by grace. Romans chapter 12 verse 6 says this. We have different gifts. Based on the grace that was given to us. So if your gift is prophecy, use your gift in proportion to your faith. And he goes on to say on that same chapter, chapter 
that if your gift is to teach, teach it. If your gift is to exhort, exhort, he says. Because all of these gifts were given to us by grace. It is the grace of God that's, that's been showered upon our lives that we receive these gifts. And Paul says in chapter, in chapter 12, verse 6. In fact, in verse, in verse 1 of chapter 12, he talks about how that we should offer our body as living sacrifices. And he continues to talk about how that we should not offer our bodies into sinful deeds, into sinful acts. But how that we should offer our bodies to please God and to sacrifice for the sake of God and to, and to bring glory to him and so on. And he says, even those gifts that you have received come from God. Use them for his glory. And he says that every gift has been given to individual and they must use it according to the proportion of their faith. In other words, he's trying to say that you must use every gift according to the amount of the faith that's been given to you. And so today, my friends, if you and I go around, do the things of God, using the gift of God, this is by no means our gift, but this is the gift of God on our lives. This is by no means that we have earned it because we deserved it, but this is all because of the grace of God. So grace produces gifts. Fourth and lastly, grace transforms lives. You see, in the life of Paul, Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse, verse 10. He says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace shown to me was not wasted. Instead, I work harder than all the others, he says. Not I, of course, but God's grace that was with me. Paul talks about how that Jesus was resurrected from the dead. He says that the gospel, you know, the content of the gospel, in fact, is the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He says anyone who preached the gospel has to preach these three things. That Christ died for our sins, that Christ was buried on that tomb, and that Christ rose again from the dead. And he says, anybody who preached the gospel has to include these three things. And he talks about how that Jesus rose again from the dead. And how that he met the disciples and the apostles. And he says that how Christ met even me, he says, while I was on my way to Damascus to persecute the Christians there or the followers of Christ there. He says, Christ met me on the way. It's the grace of God that came in power and strength and touched Paul right there and make him fall on the, on the ground as he was intending to go kill and destroy the church. Yet the grace of God with its power came and touched him. And he met Christ, he says. He says, I'm the least of all the apostles. I don't even deserve to be called an apostle, he says. But he says, by the grace of God, I am what I am today. It's by the grace of God, I am what I am today. He says, he says I work harder than any all of the other apostles. All those 12 apostles of Christ. He says, I work harder than any one of them. Being the least, being the last one in a sense that Christ met personally, I work harder than any one of them. But he says, I want to caution here that it is not me. It is not my hard work, he says. It is the grace of God. And definitely if you look at Paul, you will see that Paul has written a majority of the New Testament. He was the one who planted quite a number of churches compared to the other apostles. Of course, the other apostles have done their job. They have pastored the churches, they have moved around, they have preached the gospel. But Apostle Paul was very effective. In that it's true when he says, I work harder than the others. But he cautioned to not to take pride in hard work. But that we should give God the glory by acknowledging, attributing to the grace of God upon his life. Saying that it's the grace of God that has made me the way I am. It's the grace of God that's worked in me that I'm able to accomplish Will you and I today be able to acknowledge and attribute to this very grace of God that we are what we are today? I'm humbled when I think about this. I said, Lord, if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for your grace, I wouldn't be able to stand even right here this morning. It's by the grace of God, my friends. Let us all remind ourselves this morning that Christ is the one who saved us. That Christ has justified us. That Christ has clothed us with that cloth of righteousness. That today we stand before God. Not as people who are unworthy. But as people who are worthy. Because Christ has made us worthy before him. And we go to God today sinless. 
we go to God today with boldness in our hearts, knowing that we have been forgiven from all the sins that we have committed because grace have dealt with us. Grace have dealt with the sins. I want us this morning to pay attention to this one thing. And pay attention we must to this one thing. That is the grace of God and its power that's at work in your life, in my life today. That if we will begin to humble ourselves and to acknowledge that very grace, we would be lifted up. That God will know how to make use of us. That God will know how to lift us up in his own time. Just because we've acknowledged that very grace of God had worked in us. And I pray this morning that this very grace, which, it, which was at work in the life of the disciples, in the life of Paul the Apostle, in the life of the early church, in the life of the church down, down centuries, that it will be at work in your life and my life today. That we will carry the same grace with us, the same power with us, that wherever we go and whatever we do, we acknowledge His grace in our life and that God will be able to take glory out of our lives. It's not because we are able to do so, but it's because of the power of grace that's at work in us.